Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Thinking in Causation, Level 2, Testing Causes. Um, like in Level 1, when we're dealing with the concept of cause and effect, it's very important that you always start by defining the system that you're going to investigate. And we learned in the last video that cause will always lead to effect. So the object that represents cause and effect is a green arrow. Because in science, we're identifying what's the effect, and then how do we work backwards to figure out the cause. Um, what makes this video a little bit different is sometimes we could have a couple of causes or multiple causes that might be causing the effect. And so how in science do we develop a test or a fair test to figure out which of these causes is actually responsible for the effect? After watching this video, you should be able to develop a fair test for materials and how they cool or heat materials. Um, or we could also learn how to develop a fair test for plant growth. But I'm going to start by showing you my thinking around this ramp and ball, and then we'll work together to figure out the faulty flashlight. So the first thing you should do with any kind of uh, cause and effect is we should develop what's the system or determine what is the system. So in this case, the system is going to be the ramp and the ball, and let's just investigate this. When I roll the ball down, there's one behavior. Here's another behavior. There's another behavior. So what we're getting is lots of weird effects that are coming from the ball rolling down the ramp. And so first thing we should do is identify what's the effect and what are some possible causes. So what I've shown you here is that the effect is the unpredictable motion. The cause is unknown. We don't know what might be causing it, but I've listed or brainstormed some ideas of what might be causing it. It could be the surface it's rolling down. There might be a magnet or a weight. And so these are all possible causes. So what we have to do now is develop a test. How do we develop a test to figure out what might be causing this unpredictable motion? So let me start by looking at the surface. So what I've done here is determine that maybe we test different surfaces. Maybe we start with the normal surface and test it. Then we do a smooth surface. So maybe I just get some paper and put it on the ramp so it's very smooth. Or maybe we use some fabric and put that on the ramp so we can change the surface to something that's rough. And so what we're doing is we're testing these as possible causes for the effect of unpredictable motion. Um, after we've developed that test, the next thing we might do is we might look at the magnet or we might look at the weight. And the key thing that we're doing is we're only testing one of those possible causes at a time and we're keeping the other things consistent. We wouldn't want to add a magnet and a weight and do all of those things at once because it won't tell us which of these possible causes is actually responsible for that unpredictable motion. So this is how I would organize the first um, system. What I'm going to do is set up the second system and we're going to let you give it a try. So on the second system, what we have is a faulty flashlight. So when I hit the button, it's not turning on. I would determine for you what the system is. And what I want you to do is write out what's the effect, what's uh, some possible causes, and then how would you develop a fair test that you could test it out? I wanted to show you some of the parts of the system. We've got a lamp, we've got a battery. And so pause the video and what I want you to do is write out what's the effect, what's the causes, and then how would you develop a, a possible test. And when you come back, I'm going to show you how I would think about this system. Okay, for me to show you some of my thinking, again, the cause is unknown. Uh, the effect would be that we have no light. First thing I would do would brainstorm some ideas of possible causes. It could be that the battery doesn't have a charge. It could be the battery's direction is wrong, or maybe we have a lamp that's broken. Next thing we would do is we would want to develop a test. So if I want to test out if it's battery charge and how that is affecting the light, I could just try the old battery and then I could try a brand new battery. And we could figure out, does that affect it or not? Um, another thing we could do is we could look at maybe the battery direction. So we could look at a fair test where we test the battery direction 
and it could be the normal direction or we could reverse the direction. And so what we're trying to do is not so much figure out what's wrong with the flashlight. Um, you would eventually figure out that this battery is put in in the wrong way and it's gonna work if we go like that. The key thing is for us to understand what do we do in science when we've got an effect, we don't know what the cause is, how do we develop possible tests or fair tests so we could figure that out. So now that you've seen me do some thinking and we've done some thinking together, what I would have you do next is look on one of the Google slide decks below and let's try to do this with the melting of ice on different materials or plant growth. There's a slide deck and there's also a key. Remember, as we do all of this, the best way to learn it is not listen to me, but try it out. Um, try these Google slide decks, check it on the key, and also as you move out into the world, start thinking about what are the effects and how could I develop possible tests to figure out if those are the cause or not. So that's testing causes and I hope that was helpful.